When you look into my eyes, what do you see? Look a little deeper. What do you really see? They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. If that's the case, then why the hell you can't look me in my eyes? Is my soul not pure enough? My eyes do bleed red, just not white nor blue. You tell me my people are free, but that's a lie I've learned to live with. Why, you might ask. The last time I checked, people who have darker melanin have more hands on steel cage bars than they've ever had before. The last time I checked, strangers who share a darker complexion are still overwhelmingly being segregated when it comes to overpopulated prisons, outdated textbooks, overpoliced ghettos. The last time I checked, those who carry the weights of a blacker pigmentation are seen as unsolvable math problems well before we are seen as hardworking people. Gun-holding thugs well before we are seen as law-abiding citizens. I remember the first time I was called a nigger. And I've never felt so much rage in my life. And words don't usually get to me. But maybe transgenerational trauma is real. And I mention all of this to ask again. When you look into our eyes, what do you see? Let me tell you what we see. Through our eyes, we see pain. Because waterfalls can't stop flowing from mother's eyes after holding on to lifeless hands of children murdered by a system that never gave a damn about them in the first place. Through our eyes, we see anger. Anger after seeing new neighbors welcomed with open arms, whole foods, and coffee shops when all you've received are eviction notices. Displaced from communities your family has invested in for generations. Through our eyes, we see struggle. The ongoing struggle of being demonized for being to us, while others who do not share our identity are praised by society for the same actions. Through our eyes, we see strength. Strength in those who have been stripped of the bare essentials for months on end and still figure out how to make ends meet. Through our eyes, we see power. Power in our subtle nods, raised fists, black thoughts, because of the dark past we have in common, we have no guilt for the crumbs we have fought for, nor the fistfuls we plan to take, as we are simply reclaiming the American pie our ancestors were forced to make. If at any time you thought it was okay to borrow our culture, I invite you to do it now. But instead of rhythmic and lyrical sounds, or interwoven locks, or viral dances, appropriate our pain. The pain of not being responsible for the devastation of your past due to your skin color, but still being responsible for the development of your future while others continue to reap what your ancestors have sown. Appropriate our anger. The anger of millions whose loved ones are still locked up in prison due to a war they never asked for. While our white counterparts dominate the cannabis industry, creating generational wealth in the process. Appropriate our depression. Because you know communities such as Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, communities where your grandparents own their own restaurants and movie theaters and hospitals and homes, which would have uplifted you out of your poverty today if it had not been for people envious of your skin, burning it all to the ground with no expectation to build it back up. And when you continue to appropriate our pain, our anger, our depression, our trauma for generations, maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to understand that what is happening today in America is far from liberty, far from justice, far from equality. So until then, so until then, I challenge you to reflect on what it truly means to see through black eyes well after February has passed. Whether you want to admit it or not, black history is your history too.